In this video, we're going to learn about multiple inheritance in C++. So in C++, a derived class can actually inherit from multiple base classes. This can lead to some issues around ambiguity. It can also lead to something called the diamond problem. If the base classes inherit from a common base class themselves. Let's go over an example of multiple inheritance first. We'll say class base class one and base class one is going to have one public member function, function one. And function one is just going to output function one, base class one, followed by an end line. Then we'll do the same thing for base class two. It's going to be so similar that we'll actually just copy and paste base class one here. And we'll make a base class two and function two and here we're going to say function to base class two. So now let's make a derive class that will inherit from both base class one and base class two. So we'll have class derive class colon and then public base class one comma public base class two. And that's pretty much it. We're now inheriting from both base classes here. We'll make one more function here. We'll say public void function three and again we'll output function three and this time derive class followed by an end line now let's try to make an instance of this drive class object so down here in our main function we'll say drive class derived and then we'll call function one function two and function three so derived function one, derived function two, and derived function three. So if we save and run our program here, we're going to find that we access all three functions and the derived class is successfully inheriting from the two base classes. So that's multiple inheritance. Now there can be some issues with multiple inheritance. One of them is potential ambiguity. So let's imagine that we have three function ones, one function one defined in each class, which function one is going to be called when we say drive.function one. So here we'll say function one and then function one drive class. And then in base class two, we'll say function one, function one. And in base class one, we're going to say function one, function one. Now we're going to try to call function one of this drive class object instance. If we run this, we're going to get function one drive class. The reason why that's the case is we have overriding going on where function one is being overridden by the drive class. So it doesn't matter that both base classes also have a function one, but what if our derived class does not override function one? If it doesn't override function one, which function one is going to be inherited? The one from base class one or the one from base class two? Let's comment out this here and see what happens now. So now our drive class is no longer overriding function one. And we'll try to call function one of this drive class object instance. If we save this and run it, we now get an error. And the error says member function one found in multiple base classes of different types. So we have an ambiguity here and the ambiguity is occurring because we're no longer overriding function one in our drive class. We can resolve the ambiguity here by saying base class one colon colon. If I save this and run it, it's going to work and we get function one base class one because we're calling base class one's function one. If I said base class two here and I save it and run it, we're gonna call function one of base class two. So that's how we can resolve the potential ambiguity that may occur. The ambiguity may occur with member variables as well. So for example, let's say that both base classes have a member variable called value. So we'll also add int value 
to base class two here. What's gonna happen if we try to set that value member variable of this drive class object instance? If we say drive.value is equal to 20, and we try to save and run it, we get the exact same issue where we have this ambiguity here. And we're gonna resolve it in the same way. We're gonna say base class one colon colon, and that's gonna set the member variable value that's associated with base class one. We could also say base class two in the same way, and this would set the value member variable that was inherited from base class two. Now using this colon colon scope resolution operator together with the class name might not be a very elegant solution if really we want our derived class to use one function or the other from one of the base classes. To solve that problem, one thing we could do is override function one, but then have it explicitly call one of the base classes function ones. So here we'll say, let's override function one. But let's say we really want our derived class object instances to use base class ones, function one. We could just say base class one, colon, colon, function one. Then down here, we can just call function one like this. And we know it's gonna call base class ones, function one, but we're okay with that. That's what we want. So we save this and run it, and we'll get function one, base class one. So that's one potential solution to that problem. Another problem that can occur with multiple inheritance is called the diamond problem. So the diamond problem looks like this. If both base class one and base class two inherit from a common base class, we're gonna have an issue. So for example, if that common base class contains public member variables, base class one and base class two are both gonna inherit those and they'll have their own copy of those member variables. Then the drive class is gonna inherit both of those, which is again gonna to lead to an ambiguous situation. Let's go over an example. We'll make a common base class. We'll say class common base class and then public int common value. So we have this public member variable common value in the common base class. And now we'll make base class one and base class two both inherit from the common base class. So we'll say public common base class and then colon public common base class. Now let's try to set that common value member variable. So we'll say derived dot common value is equal to 10. If we save this and run it, we get an error here. It says non-static member common value found in multiple base class sub-objects of type common base class. So we effectively have an ambiguity problem again. The way we can solve this is by using the virtual keyword. So here we're gonna say virtual and virtual. When we inherit the common base class in the case of base class one and base class two, that's gonna clear up that ambiguity. If we save this and run it now, we're okay. Virtual is effectively making it so that the derived class inherits only one common base class instead of two. Now, one other issue that can come up is with the constructors. So with a derived class and a base class, even if it's happening implicitly with default constructors, the derived class does call the base class's constructor. So for example, right now, base class one is calling the default constructor of common base class. And that's happening implicitly. We can't see it, but it's happening. So what happens in the case of this drive class here? What is it gonna do? It's inheriting the common base class, potentially from base class one or base class two. But base class one or base class two could have their own ways of calling the common base class constructor. 
they could even be calling different constructors of the common base class. How is this ambiguity going to be resolved? What we'll do is make a parameterized constructor in the common base class. So we can see explicitly what's happening. But once we have that parameterized constructor in the common base class, things are no longer going to be happening implicitly. And what's going to happen is the derived class is actually going to have a decision to make about which constructor of the common base class to call and how to call it. And that's kind of different because normally the derive class will call the base classes constructor. But here we're sort of going up an extra level in inheritance where this derive class is going to be calling the constructor of its base classes base class. So let's go over an example here. We'll make a constructor common base class with int common value. And we'll say colon common value and then common value. And now we have a parameterized constructor for the common base class. Let's also make a default constructor. So we'll say common base class and we're going to set common value to negative 99 in this case. Let's have each base class use the common base class parameterized constructor. And we're going to initialize the common base class with different values. So we'll say base class one colon common base class and we'll say 100. So base class one is using its default constructor to initialize the common base class with 100. We'll copy this and for base class two, we'll also use the common base class parameter constructor. But this time here, we're going to say 200. So in the case of this derived class, we might think which of these constructors is going to be used to build its common base class. This one here in base class two, or this one here in base class one, because it's inheriting from both these classes. So it seems like it may be ambiguous. Let's see what actually happens though. So here, after we've instantiated this instance of the derived class, let's actually output the common value. So we'll say C out common value colon. We'll output derived dot common value followed by an end line. If we save this and run it, we actually get common value negative 99. And this is what's pretty interesting. Derive class is going to use neither one of these constructors. These constructors are going to apply when we go to make a base class one or base class two object instance. In the case of making a derive class object instance, it's up to the derive class to decide which of the common base class constructors to call and how to call it. Right now, derive class is implicitly calling that default constructor of the common base class that we defined up here that sets the common value to negative 99. We could have it explicitly call the parameterized constructor. So we could say drive class, common base class, and we could say 999. And now we're having it explicitly call the parameterized constructor of common base class. So now if we save this and run it, we'll get a common value of 999. So having to deal with complexities like this is part of why multiple inheritance is sometimes criticized as a language feature. Hopefully this video has helped you understand multiple inheritance in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.